This program is supported by Bibeg Integra 3000 Plus, Mix Palette and Grades, Iba Ang Laking Integra. Angeles and you're watching Eagle News International. Joining me is CJ Hero. Hello, CJ. Hello, Alma, and good evening to everyone watching us tonight. Welcome to the program. Now on tonight's headlines. More than 500 people have been killed in the Myanmar junta's brutal crackdown on protests against its coup to oust civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi, according to a local monitoring group. <laughs> I want to begin with yesterday. U.S. President Joe Biden warned that the war against COVID-19 is far from won and blasted people responsible for reckless behavior. And the moves come after Rochelle Walensky, director of Centers of or for Disease Control and Prevention, highlighted worrying trends in the data that signaled the United States could soon follow Europe into another wave. When you saw the officer and the stomach churning video of George Floyd's death under the knee of a Minneapolis policeman takes center stage as arguments in the politically charged murder trial open. After the stretcher was Finally, we have uh, Chinese leaders endorsing a sweeping overhaul of Hong Kong's electoral system slashing its number of directly elected seats and ensuring a majority of the city's lawmakers will be selected by a reliably pro-Beijing committee. We're still following the developments out of Myanmar in its crisis. More than 500 people have been killed in the junta's brutal crackdown on protests against its coup to oust civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi, according to a local monitoring group. Daily rallies across Myanmar by unarmed protesters have been met with tear gas, rubber bullets, and live rounds. Now, the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, or AAPP, said it had confirmed a total of 510 civilian deaths, but warned the true toll was probably significantly higher. UN Secretary General Gutierrez, Antonio Gutierrez, urged the Myanmar authorities to undertake a serious democratic transition. Despite the bloodshed, protests turned out again on Monday with mourners at the funerals defiantly showing the three-fingered salute that has become emblematic of the movement. The UN Security Council will meet on Wednesday to discuss the situation, according to diplomatic sources, after Britain called for emergency talks. A Myanmar toddler has miraculously survived a weekend airstrike that killed his father in their bamboo hut near the Kuhit country's border with Thailand. On Saturday night, the Myanmar military launched the first uh, airstrikes in Karen State in 20 years, hours after a rebel group had seized a military base. Among the targets hit was the bamboo hut of uh, Sao Te Akalumutau, almost three years old, who lives in the Daibudo Valley with his former parents. He was sitting on his dad's lap at the time, and the shrapnel from the bomb killed his father. The boy has uh, lacerations to his neck and has some fragments still in him. David Eubank from the Free Burma Rangers told AFP, saying the father, so I lied to, 27, died instantly. Health workers are concerned the little boy could develop an infection from the metal fragments and are giving him antibiotics. Meanwhile, a Myanmar footballer playing for a Malaysian club has been hit with a one-match ban for flashing the three-finger salute used by anti-coup protesters during a game, according to an official. 
Hain Tet Ong, who plays for second division side Selangor FC 2, made the political gesture during a match against PDRM FC in early match. A picture of him flashing the symbol went viral and he was found to have broken rules and prohibiting offensive gestures or language, according to Malaysia's Football Association, adding that his conduct was unsportsmanlike. Hain Tet Ong was banned from playing in the game against Perak FC 2 this Friday and he could face heavier penalties if he repeats the offense. The three-finger salute inspired by the Hunger Games films has become a symbol of resistance in Asia, first used widely by Thai pro-democracy protesters last year. In other news, Washington suspended a trade pact with Myanmar and UN Chief Antonio Guterres called for a united global front to put pressure on the junta after more than 100 protesters were killed in a bloody weekend of violence. U.S. President Joe Biden's administration announced Monday that the 2013 Trade and Investment Framework Agreement, which laid out ways to boost business but was not a fully-fledged deal, would remain suspended until democracy is restored. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai said the United States strongly condemns the Burmese security forces' brutal violence against civilians using Myanmar's former name of Burma. This statement effectively removes Myanmar from the generalized system of preferences in which the United States grants duty-free access to some imports from developing nations if they meet key standards. The U.S. had cooperated with Myanmar on trade and investment to support the nation's integration into the global economy. This suspension is effective immediately. In other news, U.S. President Joe Biden's administration announced a raft of new actions to expand the national immunization campaign and ensure that 90 percent of adults will be eligible for vaccination against the coronavirus by April 19. But he warned the war against COVID-19 is far from won and blasted people responsible for reckless behavior. And this move also comes after Rochelle Walensky, the director of the CDC, highlighted worrying trends in the data that signaled the United States could soon follow Europe into another wave, warning of a potential fourth wave of the virus and saying she has a recurring feeling of impending doom. Take a look. I want to begin with yesterday, we in the United States surpassed 30 million cases of COVID-19. The seven-day average of new cases is slightly less than 60,000 cases per day. This is a 10% increase compared to the prior seven-day period. Hospitalizations have also increased. The most recent seven-day average, about 4,800 admissions per day, is up from 4,600 admissions per day in the prior seven-day period. And deaths, which typically lag behind cases and hospitalizations, have now started to rise. When I first started at CDC about two months ago, I made a promise to you. I would tell you the truth, even if it was not the news we wanted to hear. Now is one of those times when I have to share the truth and I have to hope and trust you will listen. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to lose the script and I'm going to reflect on the recurring feeling I have of impending doom. We have so much to look forward to, so much promise and potential of where we are and so much reason for hope. But right now I'm scared. Um, I know what it's like as a physician to stand in that patient room, gowned, gloved, masked, shielded, and to be the last person to touch someone else's loved one because their loved one couldn't be there. I know what it's like when you're the physician, when you're the healthcare provider, and you're worried that you don't have the resources to take care of the patients in front of you. I know that feeling of nausea when you read the crisis standards of care and you wonder whether there are gonna be enough ventilators to go around and who's gonna make that choice. Scientific breakthrough vaccines and we are rolling them out so very fast. So I'm speaking today not necessarily as your CDC director, or not only as your CDC director, but as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter, to ask you to just please hold on a little while longer, to get vaccinated when you can, so that all of those people that we all love 
will still be here when this pandemic ends. The trajectory of the pandemic in the United States looks similar to many other countries in Europe, including Germany, Italy, and France. Looked like just a few weeks ago, and since that time, those countries have experienced a consistent and worrying spike in cases. But as I've also said, I will always give you it straight, straight from the shoulder. Our work is far from over. The war against COVID-19 is far from won. This is deadly serious. We share the sentiment of Dr. Walensky, the head of the Center for Disease Control and, and Prevention. The CDC expressed earlier today, this is not a time to lessen our efforts. That's what she said. We could still see a setback in the vaccination program. And most importantly, if we let our guard down now, we could see a virus getting worse, not better. You know, as many people as we vaccinated, we still have more Americans left to go. You know, we will administer more shots in March than any country on Earth. But even so, we have to give more shots in April than we did in March. Because we're in the life and death race with the virus that is spreading quickly, with cases rising again, new variants are spreading. And sadly, some of the reckless behavior we've seen on television over the past few weeks means that more new cases are to come in the weeks ahead. Cases have fallen two-thirds since I took office. Deaths have also fallen two-thirds. But now cases are going back up. In some states, deaths are as well. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony Fauci talks about the importance of vaccination to prevent severe disease and why we cannot pull back on mitigation efforts. Watch this. Neurological disorders, cardiac vaccination to prevent severe disease and why we cannot pull back on our mitigation efforts. This is a paper from the Annals of Internal Medicine from some time ago, which showed that about one third of people with SARS-CoV-2 infection never develop symptoms. That's the good news. Next slide. Of those who do develop symptoms, about 80% have mild to moderate symptoms, but about 20% or more have severe disease with case fatality rates varying from a few percent to up to 20% for those requiring mechanical ventilation. Now, let me show you something that is very dramatic. If you look at the multi-system manifestations of COVID-19, they are multitudinous. The most important and, and, and common of which is the acute respiratory distress syndrome. But we know now there are neurological disorders, cardiac dysfunction, acute kidney injury, hypercoagulability. Bottom line, this is a very serious disease, which has already led to the death of about 550,000 people in the United States. Next slide. This slide is very dramatic. If you look on the left-hand part of the slide, it's a normal CT scan of the lung. The area that looks black and dark are normal lung because there are air spaces. On the right-hand side of the slide is a patient that I made rounds on at the NIH Clinical Center last week. If you look at this, even a non-physician, non-radiologist can determine that there's something very, very wrong with the lungs on the right-hand side, with the white blotches being infiltration of the lung, that even with the patient being under the top medical care that we're giving them at our hospital, still may very likely have residual scarring of the lung after improvement. Next slide. This is another patient we saw at the clinical center who developed a brain infarct as shown on the left-hand part of the slide with the arrow pointing to the infarcted part of the brain. Bottom line, as Dr. Walensky said in her experience at Mass General, the same at the NIH clinical center, this is a very, very bad disease. The fundamentals to prevent acquiring this are the public health measures that Dr. Walensky mentioned, but also vaccination. Absolutely critical. Next slide. If you look at the prevention of hospitalization and death among the five vaccines on the left-hand part of the slide, 
with one exception of a hospitalized patient in the vaccine arm of, a, of the Moderna study, virtually 100% protection against hospitalizations and death. In other words, we can prevent what I showed you on the previous two slides by getting vaccinated. And U.S. states, including Texas, Maryland, Connecticut, and Mississippi, have eased COVID-related restrictions, lifting mask mandates or allowing restaurants, retailers, and others to reopen with fewer or no restrictions. In an interview at the Face the Nation, Dr. Fauci also warned that travel over the coming Catholic Easter holiday could fuel a new surge, as occurred after the year-end holidays. Now, India recorded 56,211 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours, 7% lower than the day before as the country passed now the 12 million mark. Earlier, we were able to talk to Philippine Ambassador to India, the uh, Honorable Ramon Bagat Singh Jr., and he gave us an update on the situation of our Filipino community there. Plus more. Let's take a look. It Ambassador, could you give us the general situation in India with regards to the uh, pandemic and how is the government uh, coping with the rise in new cases of these uh, new variants? Well, right now there are about 11.8 million uh, citizens who have had uh, the, uh, the, uh, who had the virus, 11.8. And out of that, about 163 uh, 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 and so far, as far as the vaccination rollout is concerned, they've had about 55 million uh, citizens already in uh, the uh, vaccine. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're targeting by end of August about 300 million. Mm -hmm. And as I said, fortunately for us, uh, they're opening it up starting April 1 to even non-citizens. Mm -hmm. And uh, 45 years old and above. Mm -hmm. So now, the 60 years old and above are being given a vaccine, but uh, starting on April 1, uh, on the Thursday, then open it up. Mm -hmm. um, um, situation of our uh, Filipino community there, how uh, many uh, Filipinos are in Jampu sa India? Uh, more or less about 3,000, and uh, most of them, 80% are uh, housewives. Ito yung mga kababayan natin na napangasawa, mga idiots, no? mostly. Uh, what we call Middle East romances, or some of them uh, uh, internet mm -hmm. or media. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, again for us, isa lang ang may napisala sa atin na kapabayan natin. Last year pa, nung nag-upisa ang pandemic. But since that time, uh, we have not any, any deaths no, ng Pilipino. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, we're very lucky na all of them are safe, uh, they're sound, they're healthy. And uh, they can avail of the vaccine once this is uh, available uh, to, to everybody, you know, starting April 1. So we're tired now. We don't have to worry about it serious. Is it for free, po, the vaccines? Yes, it's free to all of the Indians and uh, 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 those who want to go to the clinics. But there are public clinics that are free. Now, if you go to a hospital, a private hospital, and you must obey with the vaccine and pay just 250 rupees mm -hmm. or about uh, maybe 200 pesos. So, napakamura ng bakuna dito, no? Sa mga, mga kababayan natin dito sa India at sa mm -hmm. mga Indians. Mm -hmm. 200 pesos ang pinaka-singil nila mm -hmm. sa mga private hospitals. But if you go to a public hospital, it's free. So, mm -hmm. it's sa atin. At isang magandang issue dito sa atin, Alba, is that at karangalan natin ito, dahil yung head ng WHO dito sa India ay Pilipino, si Dr. Mm -hmm. O'Frin. Mm -hmm. So, yung mga kinikwento niya sa amin, uh, ano dapat gawin, ano hindi dapat gawin, yes. ay nakaka, ikaw na nakaka-scoop tayo ang Pilipino community dahil mm -hmm. uh, Pilipino nga ang head. No? Karangalan natin yan, di mo India. Indeed. Yes, sir. Yeah, with 1.3 billion people uh, uh, at the vaccine capital of the world, uh, yes. Pilipino. Kasi yung mga vaccines na pinamibigay sa mga mundo, India is the biggest, uh, ikan nga, vaccine capital of the world. Yes. We, India produces at least 50 to 60 percent of all the vaccines in the world. Mm -hmm. Yung Serum Institute of India, uh, yan ang gumagawa ng AstraZeneca, uh, they produce 60-70 percent of the vaccines. No? Uh, and uh, 
yung uh, para biotech uh, they they are rolling out also their own local their local version sila mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, yung local version ko vaccine tawag out of the 55 million administered dito sa India 50 million is yung basta sa India or in the local brand din sila tawag dito po this year 5 million din yung gawa ng India which is called co vaccine Mm -hmm. And we're both working that ito mga bakuna na ito ay maidala ma ma dyan sa Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. Second time, yeah. yeah pumunta dito. Uh, mm -hmm. se second of March 9 to 12, mm -hmm. wala magfirma ng kontrata para sa Novavax. Yung isang, isang bakuna pa nagagawin ng India. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned so, about... Yes, you mentioned about co-vaccine. Actually, a presidential advisor for entrepreneurship, Joey Concepcion, said the private sector is expected to receive uh, 1 million doses of India's uh, co-vaccine this April, Ambassador. Yes, Alma, uh, if we're lucky, uh, one of Diyos, makuha yung EU Asia magmula sa FDA, no? Mm -hmm. Magpakuha yung next week, uh, then they can uh, start exporting them. Mm -hmm. At ang, uh, ang ating dinalakad ngayon with the help of uh, Joey Concepcion, as you mentioned, and Ambassador Kumaran, yung Ambassador ng India niya sa Pilipinas, mm -hmm. we're working on 8 million doses. Oh. Coming from Barat Biotech. Yes. I said, if we get all the approvals from the FDA, uh, hopefully, baka Mayo, may dumating na dyan ang mga 8 million. Hindi naman sabay yung 8 million eh. Mm -hmm. uh, Transcess, yes. Transcess, yes. Transcess, yes. Transcess, mga 600,000. Mm -hmm. And the second tranche will be about two, three billion. Mm -hmm. Up to the end of the year, we're working at eight for eight million doses. And uh, as I said, if we're lucky, we're going to get it. The important thing is that we're going to get approvals. Yes. You mentioned also about uh, the uh, Barrett Biotech's co vaccine uh, in its phase three trials. Uh, <coughs> it demonstrated 81% interim efficacy in preventing the coronavirus in those without prior infection after the second dose. Actually, the price is still being uh, negotiated. Can you tell us more about this uh, exciting development that you mentioned, Ambassador? Yes, uh, uh, as I said, masipang ito si Joey Concepcion. You can go negotiate, no? And uh, nagkaroon na kami ng webinar noon uh, to talk with the private sector that this is a very safe vaccine no less than the president of, uh, of the prime minister and president of India, si Prime Minister Modi, mm -hmm. at saka si President Kobe, mm -hmm. ay nag-take nito at yung mga karami na kanyang mga cabinet uh, uh, secretaries. So ito ang roll out nila and uh, maganda naman ang uh, feedback. Walang mga serious adverse effects. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, kaya nga, ang dami pumipila na yung nabansa na uh, mm -hmm. puno nito po vaccine. Kaya na, Nakapila tayo. Ang eh, importante, maka-desisyon na tayo ngayon mm -hmm. para mapatalan ka at as soon as possible time. Mm -hmm. As I said, if we're lucky, 8 million yan, it's going to be a tripartite agreement. Maraming mga NGUs na nakalista doon at saka mga korporasyon na nakalista doon. Mm -hmm. uh, mapatala dyan, di okay na. Kung sa kanil suwerte pa tayo, makahingi tayo ng donasyon, ng isang mm -hmm. talibo or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but this is purely... Uh, a public-private partnership, uh, including the NGUs. Mm -hmm. And the feedback has been very favorable. Sa mga nakakausa po dito, mga Indian na nakakuha ng co-vaccine, mm -hmm. wala na po daw silang sinasabi serious adverse effects. No? Mm -hmm. So, they're okay with that. Mm -hmm. So, from a positive perspective, India, no, despite a uh, sudden rise in cases, is confident in its vaccination program. It is um, even exporting vaccines with a high efficacy rate. Nanon po. Actually, you mentioned about co-vaccine, just a little bit of background. Two dose vaccine, 28 days apart, no sub-zero storage requirement. Tapos ready to use vials po. No reconstitution requirement. Ang galing po, ano? <laughs> Correct, kasi yung iba, yung, ano mga major uh, manufacturer ngayon, uh, China, uh, US, UK, and then uh, India. Mm -hmm. So itong, itong barat, uh, uh, biotechnology o yung vaccine at saka yung tarating na Novavax. 2 to 8 degrees Celsius lang yan. So walang heavy refrigeration na kinakailangan. Okay. So mas madaling i-handle. No? Uh, two doses, as you said, uh, it can be 28 days, but uh, uh, in some instances, it can be uh, three, um, it can be uh, four weeks, no? one month, no? or, or more. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, as I said, wala masyadong serious side effect. At saka, buha. 
compared to the others, uh, compared to the others, it's, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, so, eh, ang tayo dito ng oh, ang importante kasi mapadala na dyan eh. Ang importante ito maging dyan at ma-jump ma sa ating mga shoulders. Mm -mm. Um, may iba po tayo sandali. Um, how are the uh, travel restrictions and uh, inbound and outbound India po? Napaka-stricto, Alma. Napaka-stricto, no? Yeah. Same, same thing, Philippines and India, uh, hindi pwede mga turista. Okay? Very strict sila. The usual exemptions lang, mga diplomats, medical workers, emergency, seafarers. So, yung mga Pilipino gusto pumunta dito, o maging turista lang, we discourage that. At hindi sila nagbibigay ng visa. Mm -hmm. So, ang hindi tayo nagbibigay ng visa sa mga Pilipino maging turista dito, just mm -hmm. pay ang mga Indians na gusto pumunta sa Pilipinas na maging turista lang, hindi pa pwede. So, hindi pa pwede yan. No? Mm -hmm. uh, except for essential workers. So, mm -hmm. the... And then, ang hirap pa dyan, uh, even if you can get a visa, which is very difficult, ang hirap dyan yung commercial flights. Wala pa rin tayo commercial flights between India and the Philippines. Except through the Middle East. Mm -hmm. okay which is a mahaba proseso. Yes. Uh, so I, I recommend uh, sa ating mga kababayan uh, and the other Indians who are watching your, your program uh, to refrain muna, time out muna tayo sa biyahe. Because uh, restricted na dyan sa Pilipinas, may, meron tayong quarantine dyan, di ba? Mm -hmm. so, dito sa India, walang quarantine. Pero hindi ka makakuha ng visa. So that's the difficulty. Oh. Oh. And then in other states here, like Maharashtra, Mm -hmm. where Mumbai is located, and Kerala. Opo. In other states, napaka-stricto nila. Although pag nakakuha ka ng visa, pupunta ka ng India, walang quarantine dito, no? Mm -hmm. Pero pag pupunta ka sa ibang state, may quarantine sila. So, pipili ka muna ng lugar. So, you have to check with the Indian embassy there mm -hmm. ano yung end destination mo sa India. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some, some areas are okay, Chennai, Calcutta, but some areas are very strict na kailangan ng quarantine at saka mga RT-PCR tests. Mm -hmm. um, so, mag na sila. Mm -hmm. How would you compare po yung uh, lockdown measures dyan dito po sa atin sa Pilipinas? Like recently, as you saw earlier, President Duterte just uh, uh, retained the uh, uh, ECQ measures. We went back to EC ECQ uh, lockdown again in some areas, uh, major areas. Dyan po sa India, how would you compare it po? Well, nakikita nga sa mga pinalalabas yung mga videos, no? Medyo, dito sa Delhi, New Delhi, hindi masyadong strict to. Mm -hmm. Okay? Pero doon sa sinabi ko mga lugar na talagang strict lockdown, talagang very strict, may curfew. Hindi ka pwedeng lumabas, uulihin ka ng polis. Okay? Uh, and and, and uh, ano rin, uh, mga, unang mga pictures ng mga simulay, yung pinapalo ng uh, yanto. <gasps> yung mga magiging sa ulo, di ba? Okay. So, so, may mga ganong sitwasyon doon. Pero ngayon, wala na. Wala na ngayon. Mm -hmm. But, uh, pulihin ka lang at pagkakalitan ka. Mm -hmm. Tapos, mayroon mga ibang lumalabas ka na sa social media, isasakay ka doon sa sasakyan na may mga COVID positive. So, nakakatakutan, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, pero sila yung mga out-of-the-box uh, situations or uh, remedies. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, the, the people are following naman. Mm -hmm. Uh, sumusunod naman ng mga kababayan dito. At dahil takot na rin sila magkasakit. Mm -hmm. Although, ha as I said, yung, yung death rate dito, napakababa, less than 1%. Uh -huh. Okay, Ambassador, mabalik po tayo sa travel. Meron lang po akong itatanong. In August, there were special flights between India and the Philippines. And meron po bang ibang na-arrange na ganitong flights? If ever, what are the essential reasons for travel po? <laughs> Well, we were able to lobby with the Indian government na ang tawag na siya yung Pante Parat Mission. Kasi nung umpisa ng, uh, uh, ng pandemic, uh, May, June, July last year, ang daming standard na Pilipino dito na sumuwi sa atin and vice versa. Okay. Mas maraming Indians na na-standard dyan. Maraming Indian students dyan eh. Okay. okay? So we were able to lobby with the India, Air India, the airlines of the Indian government. So we got them to ban the vaccination, and with that, we were able to repatriate more than a thousand Filipinos, no, from here going to Manila, plus the mga ibang chartered flights na nakuha ko sa ibang Indigo or Spice Jet. So we got them Filipino na pauwi sa Pilipinas, and vice versa, we got them to Indians na pauwi dito. Ngayon, 
Atidi Gintilaya because of this spike. Yeah. With the last flight we had was, uh, I think, uh, uh, first week of February this year. Mm. So we would have chartered flights. We mga Filipino Indians dyan na nakausap ng ibang travel agency at saka ang Indigo. Mm -hmm. And they were able to arrange chartered flights. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, tinigil dyan itong February tapos na, na cancel kayo yung mga scheduled flights this March. Mm -hmm. So we hope that when the situation improves, kasi nag-order ang Indian government na no commercial flights, uh, unless you get an exemption from their Ministry of Aviation, Civil Aviation. Mm -hmm. And uh, they gave the debt, uh, they, they gave the period of April 31 or 30. Mm -hmm. So, tapos sila natin itong April and then hopefully we will be able to organize again charter flights. Mm -hmm. All right. Maraming maraming salamat po for your time, Ambassador. Baka meron po kayong uh, huling mensahe sa mga nanonood po sa inyo ngayon. Well, the important thing is all of us, whether you're in India or in the Philippines, stay safe. If there is any vaccine available, do take it right away. We will not be there. We will not be there. And we will not be there. 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 And 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 we will not be there. Mga kababayan natin dyan, kung meron silang mga kaibigan, mga kababayan sa India, just keep in, get in touch with me and we'll do whatever we can to help them. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Alma. Eagle News will be right back. Stay tuned. is brought to you by Canriv Corporation, your ventilation and air conditioning specialist. Services offered, supply and installation of elevators, escalators, air conditioners, ventilators, jet towel, hand dryers, generators, access control system, factory automation, and modernization. For more info, please contact Ami Kanke at 0915-263-7198 or 0998-900-3224. Welcome back to the news. A team of international experts will present details Tuesday of their findings from a mission to China, which concluded COVID-19 probably passed to humans from a bat via an intermediary animal, all but ruling out a laboratory leak. The expert report on the origins of COVID-19 has had a troubled birth with publication delays adding to the holdups and diplomatic wrangling that plagued the WHO shows attempts to get experts into Wuhan, the city at the center of the initial outbreak. They finally arrived on January 14 of this year, more than a year after the first cases surfaced. Experts believe the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes the COVID-19 disease originally came from bats. The report authors judged that uh, the most likely scenario was that it had made a direct leap to humans while not ruling out other things theories. Beijing's theory that the virus did not originate in China at all, but was imported in frozen food was judged possible, but very unlikely. But the report drafted by World Health Organization appointed international experts and their Chinese counterparts offers no definitive answers on how the new coronavirus jumped to humans. AFP obtained a copy of the final report ahead of its official publication on Tuesday. To the U.S. now, where two witnesses answered questions from prosecutors and Derek Chauvin's defense attorney as arguments in the trial of the white police officer accused of killing George Floyd open in Minneapolis. Donald Williams, a 33-year-old martial arts instructor who was on the scene, says he told Chauvin at the time that his knee on Floyd's neck was the equivalent of a dangerous blood choke and used in wrestling and fighting. Take a look. When you saw the officers bring Mr. Floyd across the street, did you see Mr. Floyd struggle with or resist the officers? Uh, no. And when uh, the officers first brought Mr. Floyd to the ground and you saw the three officers on top of him, there wasn't a large crowd at that time, was there? I don't think so, no. 
In fact, that didn't happen until much later, correct? Yeah. And you never saw the officers get up off of Mr. Floyd until after the ambulance arrived, after the stretcher was pulled out. Is that right? Uh, yep, that's what it said in the video. Oh, shows in the video. All right, nothing for you. Get a sense. You can get a sense that people were angry. Okay. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And that feeling of anger is different when you're there and watching it than when it is when you're here talking about it in the courtroom. I don't think so. You don't think I so? I think if you're still upset about the situation, you're still going to be upset about it. I so understood. Her expertise was like, look, he's fading away. You need to check his pulse. She's asking him multiple times. I'm asking him multiple times. No one checked his pulse. He did it right there. You see his foot is on the, his toe is pointing down and you will see a small gesture in his back foot like this. And that's just the pressure you push more down between his knee, George's head and the concrete and cut off circulation. All right, I will continue on that, please. Yeah, he just did it again. We saw that movement there that moves Correct. the knee and on his that. foot. This time his foot came up off the ground, so no foot on the, on the, on the ground. So all the pressure is on his neck. So and you're talking, did you think, you know, based on your training experience, that this looked like a blood choke? That is correct. And did you say that to the officer? That's correct. The trial is expected to last about a month. Three other former police officers involved in the incident, Tu Thao, Thomas Lane, and Jay Alexander Kuang, are to be trialed separately, are to be tried separately later this year. To the Suez Canal now, where finally the gigantic container ship, the Ever Given, is now afloat after running aground last week. An episode that's likely to cause a 40% drop in shipping deliveries from Asia to Europe in April. The forecast from UNCTA, the UN Trade and Development Organization, comes after tugs and diggers managed to dislodge the 1,300-foot vessel from the sides of the Maritime Channel that links the Gulf to continental Europe. Watch this. For us here in Western Europe, about 20% in total of what we eat and drink and dress comes from east of Suez. And for some products, that's electronics, office equipment, textiles, this reaches 40 to 50%. So for some of these goods, better be prepared for some delays of your online orders. بشكل كامل قريبا و... كتير هدير طبعا وزي ما قال فريق اسامه ربيع بانه عمليه الانقاذ دي هتكون عمليه تدرس عندنا من الاخبار كمان المفرحه بعد تحريك السفينه On... Mr. Hoffman said that smaller cargo ships were once again navigating along the Suez Canal, while larger vessels had already detoured around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, a longer journey that would likely lead to greater emissions as ships traveled faster to make up lost time. In other news, the U.S. sent its Palau ambassador to Taiwan this week in a rare visit by a serving diplomat that has riled Beijing as Washington seeks to counter China's growing influence in the Pacific. Ambassador John Hennessy Neeland is accompanying Palau President Surin Jill Whips, who is in Taiwan to launch a travel bubble with the island. Take a look. I know that here in Taiwan, people describe the relationship between the United States and Taiwan as real friends, as real progress. And I think that description applies to the three countries, the United States, Taiwan, and Palau. 
Palau is one of only 50 nations that officially recognize Taiwan over China, which views the self-ruled democratic island as its own territory and has vowed to one day seize it. The presence of a U.S. ambassador on the visit has ruffled Beijing's feathers, with the foreign ministry on Monday saying it opposed Hennessy Nilland's trip. Democratic Taiwan lives under the constant threat of invasion by authoritarian China, which has stepped up military, diplomatic and economic pressure since the 2016 election of President Chai Ing-wen. Washington has remained Taipei's most important unofficial ally and its leading arms supplier despite switching diplomatic recognition to Beijing in 1979. It maintains de facto diplomatic relations through the American Institute in Taiwan, a government-sponsored nonprofit. Historically, it avoided sending serving State Department diplomats to Taiwan, and that changed under former President Donald Trump, who ramped up official contacts and lifted restrictions on how American diplomats could interact with their Taiwanese counterparts. In other news, Chinese leaders endorsed a sweeping overhaul of Hong Kong's electoral system Tuesday, creating power to or powers to vet anyone standing for public office and slashing the number of directly elected politicians. The new measures which bypassed Hong Kong's legislature were among and were among uh, those imposed directly by Beijing are the latest move aimed at quashing the city's democracy movement after huge protests. President Xi Jinping signed the new law after it was unanimously approved by China's top decision-making body. Watch this. Chenguan when Hong Kongers are allowed to vote in limited local elections, they tend to do so overwhelmingly for pro-democracy candidates, something that has rattled authoritarian Beijing. Under the new measures, Hong Kong's legislature will be expanded from 70 to 90 seats, but only 20 of those seats will now be directly elected down from 35. That brings direct representation down from half to less than a quarter of seats. The majority which is 40 seats, will be chosen by a reliably pro-Beijing committee. The remaining 30 will be chosen by functional constituencies, bodies representing certain industries and special interest groups that have also been historically loyal to Beijing. In other news, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's influential sister slammed the South's president on Tuesday as a parrot raised by America after he criticized a missile test by Pyongyang. South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who has long backed engagement with Pyongyang, made a carefully measured speech on Friday when the South marked three deadly attacks by the North since 1999 that did not specifically refer to the missile test. Actions that stand in the way of resuming dialogue between Pyongyang and Washington were undesirable, he said. His speech prompted denunciation from Pyongyang with Kim Yo-jong, a key advisor to her brother, calling it the height of effrontery. She had been struck speechless, she said in a statement carried by the official KCNN KCN news agency, referring to Moon only as the South's chief executive and not by his name or title. Calling him, quote, a parrot raised by America, she said he was employing the gangster-like logic of the U.S. In other news, German firm BioNTech says it is on track to manufacture 2.5 billion doses of its vaccine this year with U.S. partner Pfizer, 25% more than previously expected. The company said the boost would allow it to address increased demand as countries around the world race to contain 
new, more contagious virus variants. The higher output was driven by the recent launch of a new production site in the German city of Marburg, which is now one of the world's largest mRNA vaccine manufacturing plants, it said. The plant will eventually produce up to 1 billion COVID jabs a year, once fully operational. The vaccine is also being produced at a Pfizer plant in Be Belgium and at three sites in the United States. BioNTech said improved efficiency and new cooperation agreements with outside partners had also helped lift its vaccine target, as had the regulatory nod allowing vaccinators to extract six instead of just five doses from a single BioNTech Pfizer vial. Eagle News will be right back for more updates. Please don't go away. Be Meg Integra 3000 Plus Mixed Pellets and Grains Gawa sa tamang timpla ng expertly formulated pellets at grains Para sa magandang pangangatawan at tamang timbang ng inyong mga manok Be Meg Integra 3000 Plus Iba ang laking Integra Mula noon hanggang ngayon Gabay natin ang MTRCB ratings sa matalino at responsabling panonood Sa tamang pagsunod sa MTRCB ratings, ginagawa nating ligtas at makabuluhan ang panonood ng bawat miyembro ng Pamilyang Pilipino. Lumipas man ang panahon hanggang may Pamilyang Pilipino, ang dyan ang MTRCB. And uh, 10 adult alligators are released at the Australian Reptile Park near Sydney by cautious zookeepers. The reptiles, which are not native to Australia, unlike the crocodile, will join 45 other adult alligators. Most of the new gators have been named after famous rappers. Take a look. Yeah, it's amazing to be able to work with big gators like this and obviously we've got a stack of alligators out in the lagoon and now we've got a whole bunch of new boys so yeah it's been a lot of fun no bite so far which is always good it's been nice and safe but these gators are pretty fiery it's going to be pretty exciting feeding them come springtime that's for sure That is indeed very scary. Well, finally, in our news, an Ecuadorian policeman has been arrested after airport officials in the Galapagos Islands discovered 185 baby giant tortoises stuffed in a suitcase to be trafficked. Authorities said the reptiles, no more than three months old, were found in luggage destined for Guayaquil in mainland Ecuador during a routine inspection on Beltra Island on Sunday. Watch this.
like we should just stop <laughs> doing that they're such lovely creatures we True. have to just let them live and you know where, where they live and yes. just stop hunting them and just getting them you know trafficking them i love them so much yeah. <laughs> so cute you know i remember when um <laughs> My, my Lolo, my grandfather, before, he used to tell us that uh, in their house, he would buy mm -hmm. a small turtle, a small one, and then he would let it crawl around the house and it would, yeah. the fleas, the mites, they would all go out because they don't like the smell of the, tur of the turtle. Really? I did yeah. not know that. I didn't know that either until well, I heard it from him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, you know, yeah. let's just let them live where they they will flourish and they yeah. will, you know, continue making babies so we can have them <laughs> for many, many more generations. <laughs> well, that's it for tonight's broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I am CJ Hero. Please join us again tomorrow. And at the end of the day, there remains so much more to be grateful for. We'll see you back tomorrow. I'm Alma Angeles and we'll live, we live in, in interesting, interesting times. This program is supported by BBEG Integra 3000 Plus.